All right. So uh, over on Fox News, they're talking about one of their favorite issues, homelessness. Mm. You know, they really over on Fox News, they care deeply about the downtrodden. They're all Christians. Deeply concerned. They're all about the poor. And so when you, you know, when you're a Christian, you care about the downtrodden, first and foremost, Mm -hmm. the poor, the desperate, the desolate, all that stuff. So so they're all in trying to help. So anyway, um, they're discussing the issue of homelessness. And I'll let Greg Gutfeld take it from here and give you his brilliant thoughts. I want to start with the, the, the preface that we all have to do, which is we're not talking about people on the street who are there not by choice, right? But however, we are starting to see that that is not even close to the majority of homeless right now. It is the transient lifestyle has now become glamping. Yeah. It's like there, you can go, you can get a tent, you can live there, and this is what happens. And I think what's happening is even the outreach, the volunteers, the people that work with the homeless are saying, man, this is a, this is just a scheme. This is now people are just doing it because they can live above and beyond civil society, which I get. You know, I understand what she's talking about. No boss, no bills, no mortgage mortgages, free meds, free meals. But there's got to be some reciprocity to society. Don't make our lives hell. You can have your commune in the desert. Hell, I'll help pay for that. But you can't be on the street defecating. You can't, you know, scare the crap out of our kids, right? You can't make our lives a living hell. We get it. We understand that there is a, that you don't want to live by our rules, but then you don't get to live with us, right? It's like the, the, the it's like the parents cutting off the drug addict and kicking them out of the house, no matter how much they love them. Cities have to do this. They're homeless by choice. They are not your children. They are not your responsibility. We are paying for that responsibility. (laughs) And it's their lifestyle. We are supporting a lifestyle. It's time to stop. I will pay to create that lifestyle as an experiment somewhere in the desert. Tents galore, drugs galore. Hell, I'll visit. I'll be the mayor. (laughs) What do they call that big party in the desert where everybody... Burning Man. Burning Man. Yeah, Yeah, this will be Smelly Man. Yeah. (laughs) <sighs> Where do we begin? So Greg Gutfeld, the way he talks about homelessness there, first yeah. of all, he he says uh, the majority of homeless are there by choice. By choice. It's a yeah. lifestyle. It's a lifestyle that, choice. That's, and that really is like the foundation on which he builds the whole right. rest of his thing. Now, by the way, what they did in that clip is, and Media Matters post the whole thing. People can go take a look at it if they like. They find one homeless person who they interview, who feeds them all the talking points they want to hear. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, that's it. It's over. It's done. Let's yeah. like let's move on now. Meanwhile, Jordan Charity and I've seen him, and we covered some of this. He, I've seen him interview homeless people, and they don't tell the same story that that woman told. Of course, not. who basically agrees completely with the conservative narrative. It's their old traits, like find a black person to shit on black people, find a gay person to shit on gay people. It's what they do. Now they found a homeless person to basically shit on homeless people. What Greg Gutfeld does there, he says it's a scheme. Homelessness is a scheme, and he flips the power dynamics in society to make it seem like these fucking assholes are living high on the hog. Mm. These assholes, there, there's no boss, there's no rules, there's free meals. So, uh, Greg, here's my question for you. If it's such a wonderful life that you're glamorizing and acting like they love this shit, why aren't why don't aren't you homeless? What about any family members you have? Sister, brother, mom, should they be homeless? I mean, the way you talk about it, again, you're acting like they're getting one over on everybody else. Everybody know everybody knows that's absurd. What they're trying to do here is is confuse everybody in the conversation at the very least, to take them to the position of like, yeah, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. It's sort of on you completely. And um, what I wanted to do in response to it was bring up, because people forget, in the midst of that sort of garbage, people can forget the overall picture. And the overall picture is the most important thing. So remember that Oxfam report that came out a few years ago? They found the world's richest 26 people own as much, much wealth as the poorest 50%. 26 people have more than billions of people. What would that be like? 3.5 billion people? Mm. 26 people, more than 3.5 billion people. The richest 1% bagged 82% of wealth that was created in, I believe the year was 2018. And that's just one example. It's similar every single year. I mean, this is like the idea that like, hey, it's a moral failing on all these people's part. It's on them. And they just didn't, play the fair game the right way. Like the implication is that it's a fair game. I mean, there was a Rand report that came out in 2020. They said the top 1% has effectively stolen 50 trillion from the bottom 90%. Yeah. So if we just if we just kept the, the pay disparity and the wealth ratio the same from the post-World War II period until today, 
every single man, woman, and child in America would have an extra $1,166 every month for the rest of their life. So we have a system that's effectively rigged. It's totally rigged. Right. And so these people at the bottom, I mean, can you find a handful of them that were like, yeah, I, I like, yeah, I like this. I, I want to do this, right? But also, what are we talking about? Less than 5%, yeah. I 2%? Mean, I also just, I don't have the level of like moral outrage about that either. Like if someone wants to live in a fucking tent, I really don't care. Like if that's- But they're trying to act like it's all of them that right, want to do that exactly. or like 90% of them that want to do I, that. I know, yeah. but I just want to put that out there that like there's an assumption that we should be morally outraged that someone is deciding to live in a different way than you. And I just don't share that level of moral outrage. So let me just put that out there. But his caveat at the beginning- I think sort of says everything about his position because he said, oh, we all have to say we're not talking about homeless people who were there through no fault of their own. (laughs) Right. That's almost all of them. Well, you're talking about pretty much everyone then. And they're not bound by any sorts of like facts or data. If you can find one anecdote of whatever it is, then they feel totally comfortable extrapolating to the entire homeless population. And by the way, I think he's full of shit about his whole like, oh, I'll pay for their desert commune or whatever. No, you won't. I mean, the the bottom line here, you're talking about the big picture. The big picture is that rent is unbelievably expensive and keeps going up and up. Uh, If you look in cities across the country, there is basically nowhere where you can afford to rent an apartment working a minimum wage job. So lo and behold, you have more signs of visible homelessness. Like, it's really not that hard to understand. Housing is too expensive, and so people are forced onto the streets. That's the bottom line of what's going on here. But are they talking about lowering rents? No. Are they talking about lifting wages? No. Are they even talking about how do we build, how how do we get housing? How do we get people into housing? No, no. The whole thing is just about the individual person and their moral failings rather than looking at any sort of systemic issues that may have created these challenges. So uh, there was a study I reported on years ago uh, where they found that it saves the taxpayers a lot of money if you just put a roof over the heads of homeless people. That's right. So not only is it the morally and ethically correct thing to do, it's also fiscally the correct thing to do. Like if you're you're a, a, a fiscal hawk, a conservative, you should just, for the dollars and cents reason, say, why don't we put a roof over everybody's head? Give them some of those like mini houses, you know, and, and just keep it moving. But they, they don't, they never, they never, ever, ever bring that up, which again, gets to the point of, it's the shame of it. It's the, you know, it, this is on you completely. It's it, They act like people can't be raised in environments that, you know, totally set them behind the eight ball before they begin. When everybody knows, it's so many people are, are in that scenario. Um, so he he basically argues that like these people are choosing to live homeless and they're bilking the taxpayers. Right. Like, you know, and, and so but I just told you it saves money if you put a roof over there. But you never hear these guys talk about, for example, the story that just came out from Responsible Statecraft a few weeks ago. The Pentagon failed five audits in a row. They literally can't account for 59 percent of their money. That is trillions and trillions of dollars. We have the F-35-2 plane, Mm -hmm. which it's over $2 trillion how much they spent on this thing. It's almost like a plane that turns into a helicopter and can land like a helicopter would land. Yeah. There was a video that went viral the other day. They couldn't even fucking land this thing. $2 trillion. Right. Couldn't even fucking land it. Where's the outrage for that? If you really care about the money, which they don't, Right. But if you really cared about the money, you'd be talking about this. You'd be talking about the multi-trillion dollar bailouts of Wall Street. You'd be talking about the seven trillion dollars when all said and done that's wasted in Iraq and Afghanistan. Right. They don't. It's again, it's all about you're a bad person. You are immoral. You are unethical. I'm going to shame you. And I want to make my audience fucking hate you and look at you like vermin. Because, by the way, if their answer is uh, we just we got to We got to clean this up. We got to get this out of here. And then what? Where do they go? What do they do? Do you care? Of course you don't care. I ask, I don't ask that question seriously. I know yeah. they don't care. But what happens? This is what happens with these sweeps. They just, you know, destroy the 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 tents or whatever for these people. And then they they just kick them out to another place. Right. That's all it is. That's exactly so, that's exactly right. I mean, this is what uh, Mayor Adams in New York. Yeah. Out of sight, out of mind. Just get them out of mind. That's out. it. And it has not it has not curbed homelessness at all. I mean, the policy has been a complete and utter failure. So what he's, what Greg's describing here, like we know it ultimately doesn't work. But your point is apt. I mean, it's it's socialism for the rich and rugged individualism for everybody else. There's no moral failing 
when it's wealthy people that we're funneling tax breaks to, when it's Donald Trump paying literally zero dollars in taxes or seven hundred and fifty dollars in taxes, which is basically just a massive multi-million dollar government subsidy given into the former president's um, pockets. None of that is a moral failing. It's only when it's a poor person getting a hot lunch, you know, the most piddling of benefits that this becomes welfare queens, this becomes a, a moral failing, this becomes a stain on society. It's only at the bottom end of the spectrum. Think of how often people at the top get subsidies, get tax breaks. Yeah. I mean, they, and those are very powerful people who have connections in the government. So, I mean, shit, they make a phone call and it's like, yeah, what do you need? Mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen examples of negative tax rates for Honeywell, for GE. I remember covering those stories. They've had like a negative, you know, whatever, 15% tax rate. So they net got money back from the government. Mm -hmm. They're phenomenally profitable corporations. Mm -hmm. And again, nobody says anything about like, they didn't fucking earn that. This is some welfare queen shit. Why are they doing this? That makes no sense. Right. You never hear that. But, you know, when it comes to the people at the bottom, God forbid, they were like outraged that the homeless people got to eat. Mm -hmm. Really? Right. Really. If he I said, oh, they're getting, list, they're getting food and free medicine. God forbid. If I had to make a list of stuff, like if, if, if you told me, you can pick what your tax, uh, what your uh, tax money's going towards. And you gave me a list of stuff, you know, healthcare, roads, police, whatever, um, feeding homeless. Of course, I'm going to check the box for feeding homeless people. Would you rather have your money go towards that or would you rather have it go overseas and fight another stupid, aggressive war? Yeah. Or would you rather have it go to fake some- fake jet that doesn't even work. The fake jet <laughs> that doesn't even work. Or, or again, would you rather have it go to some billionaire who doesn't need a subsidy or some mm -hmm. uh, you know, oil company that in, takes it for research and development when they don't fucking need that money? They're some of the most profitable corporations on the planet. So the whole, their whole like moral uh, compass is broken. It's just so manipulative you know? too. Yeah. The whole setup is so manipulative. And then they pretend sometimes like they're for, you know, uh, us, we're for the, we're for the people at the bottom. That's what we are over mm -hmm. here on Fox News. Right. Not well, like these elitist Democrats. Also, I mean, the whole analogy of like, oh, it's the parent kicking the kid out of the basement or whatever and telling them they got to, they got to make it on their own or like, you know, they're, they're struggling with drug addiction and you're just going to like kick them out so they can hit rock bottom. Like that shit is a terrible idea too. That shit definitely doesn't it does work. does not work. Definitely doesn't Your work. Your kid is just going to end up dead instead of like struggling through something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you want to help somebody who's struggling with addiction, what you do is you, uh, you know, you talk to them, try to get through them. And then eventually take, take them to a rehab, get them like professional help, you know, like it's not to kick them out and act like this is obviously the right thing. What? Yeah. No, it, it's heartless. Anyway. All right, guys. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into the interview here with Will Meneker of Chapo Trap House. Really excited for this one. Enjoy. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.